One of the big trends for 2014 is going to be wearable computers uh, from shirts that are coming out to shoes with sensors to Google Glass to uh, Apple iWatch. Uh, and we are seeing a startup here at PCH's Highway 1 called Ringley that is going to focus on wearable jewelry uh, that has all sorts of fun things inside. And we're going to talk to them right now. Who are you? Hey. So I'm Christina Mercando, the founder of Ringley, and we're a wearable tech meets fashion company. Um, in my background, I come from the startup world. I've worked in the music industry. I was right before this, I was VP of product at a company called Hunch, uh, which was acquired by eBay in 2011. So I stayed at eBay for a little while and, and left in March to start Ringley full time. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so you're obviously seeing the same uh, trends I saw that led to the book Age of Context, where mm -hmm. sensors are going down in cost and compute is getting smaller and smaller. I mean, now that we have a Google Glass in 49 grams, right? You can tell yeah. that something's happening uh, that makes this stuff possible. What are you yeah. thinking of with Ringley? What, where are you well, guys? Uh, it's interesting because doing? a couple of years ago, this our idea wasn't really possible. Um, so it's just until recently that the technology has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller where we can start to fit electronics into things that we buy on a daily basis such as jewelry. So one of our fo big engineering focuses is miniaturization. So we're trying to get the tech as small as possible so it can fit in a lot of different form factors. Yeah. You know, uh, friends of mine have seen the Apple iWatch, which is going to have a curved piece of glass. Oh, they've and seen it. Yeah, <laughs> and they, they say it's pretty cool. And we have Pebble watches, and we have Basis watches, and uh, Wim Labs got bought by Google. So there's going to be some watches and things yep. to wear. So you're probably not the only company thinking about this. But where, where, I, where I'm predicting it's going it is a sort of fashion, right? It, if I walk closer to you and you have a phone that you've ena enabled me to see, why isn't it going to do something? Or why isn't my uh, notification going to make something happen or if I'm listening to Spotify why isn't something happening on my hands yeah. is that sort of what you're thinking kind of and and part of the problem we're trying to solve here is that it's it's kind of for women right women keep their phones in their purses we don't hear the buzz happening as much as men do because you guys keep it in your pocket yeah. so how can we alert the user to these things or the things that are important so that they can then go and check their phone so we're, we're doing a little bit of more of a pared down version. We're not having a screen in our initial products. Um, so it's really just through notifications of buzzing and light. Yeah, and the lights are changing. We, we, uh, we went to a uh, research lab in I Ireland and they showed us on the pin of a needle uh, a grid of LEDs that just hundreds of LEDs. So you can really do very, yeah. very focused kinds of light. Are, are you playing with some of these new LEDs? Yeah, I mean, right now, no, but we're definitely exploring them and thinking about them for the future. Right now, we're trying to get our first product to market and build a brand around it. Um, but, you know, all of these things, I mean, even we're starting to look into different ways to signal vibration. So right now we're using a motor, but what else can we use to, to send that signal to the user? Yeah. And, how can we get it as small as possible so you can fit it into anything? I mean, your glasses, smaller rings, wedding rings. So you're wearing a prototype, I believe, yep. right? And, and uh, it already is fairly small, but it's still pretty big as jewelry yeah. goes, right? So this is not what it's going to look like yeah. for final, but this is one of our early prototypes that um, we're showing to people. So but it's it's amazing that it's already that size. Yeah. You know when when we uh, Rocky and I went to Broadcom and we saw the first uh, Wi-Fi prototype, and it was a box this big. You yeah, know, and we I don't know think of that, right? Yeah. But it it shrunk down to less than an eighth of your fingernail. Mm -hmm. That whole box has shrunk down yeah. already, and you're and probably every iteration we do gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And um, so what? Uh, on there, you probably have a little processor. You have a couple mm -hmm. lights, a, a little Bluetooth motor. Low energy. Okay. Uh, motor, battery, LEDs. And battery, uh, it probably, you don't want to mm -hmm. charge up your jewelry every night. You want yeah. it to maybe last a week. Well, we've actually week. solved that problem. But yeah, it, tell it, me, it will, tell it me will last about five days. 
Yeah. Tell me, uh, how, do, how do you solve that problem of, of being able to talk with yeah. Bluetooth to a phone and have some mm -hmm. lights and some motors on there? How do you get it to work? longer than just you know the well it all depends on how the many eight hours my iphone yeah. seems last <laughs> it all depends on how many notifications you get through the day so if you're the type of person that wants to know when everything's going on you can set it up that way but your battery will last less yeah. but if you only want to know when the important stuff is happening it will it'll span more you know longer yeah um and we figured out a way we're not really releasing it yet but um to charge this thing where it it mimics what you do in you know your regular life when you take it off your jewelry so we're we're being a little stealth on that part, but it's okay. really cool. Yeah. Our, you know, it, it it requires a phone to work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work on its own. Uh, are you thinking of using the other sensors in the phone to maybe mm, inform what you might do with lights, for yeah. instance? Uh, what do you mean by s other sensors? Well, there's a motion sensor in the mm -hmm. new iPhone. There's an audio sensor in the new iPhone. Yep. Uh, you know, and so if I walk into a club maybe I want it to react to the sound at the club, right? Yeah, we've, we've definitely tr started to think about how, you know, your ring can influence your, your real world experiences, right? So we're looking at retail a little bit. We are starting to think about concerts and other things like that. We haven't played too much with that yet, um, but it's, it's definitely there and we're, you know, we'll probably be releasing an API where people can play with it as well. Yeah. Are you thinking of experiences like walking through a shopping mall and if mm -hmm. something on your to-do list is nearby, could it yeah. change a color or something like that? Are, yep. are you thinking about something like on that? your save list or if there's a sale happening with a store that you like? We're thinking about all that. And the other thing is, you know, do people really want to walk around stores with their phones out, right? If you start to think about all this iBeacon stuff, people still think that, okay, I'm going to walk around the store with my phone out, but we kind of want to eliminate that. So we want all the stuff to happen on what you're wearing so you don't actually have to pull your phone out. Even payments, right? You still have to take your wallet out of your bag to pay. Yeah. You still have to take your phone out of your bag to pay. How can we eliminate that? Yeah, if you walk into a Starbucks and you mm -hmm. and you say uh, pay, tap, pay. Um, it'd be nice to have a green light to indicate that, that it all worked yep. or something like that. Right? Yeah, and we've put an accelerometer into so it can detect taps, so it can detect other things that, the other inputs that the user gives it. We're here at uh, uh, Highway One, which is a new uh, incubator for startups like you. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of weird equipment around here. Yeah. I saw you guys just pull something out of a 3D printer. What, yeah. uh, what does it mean to be here? Um, so I knew nothing about hardware going into this, which is probably actually a good thing, because maybe I wouldn't have started if I knew what I was getting into. But um, Highway One's been great in teaching us how to take our, our prototypes to mass production and how to use all these tools and all these resources. So it's been really great in teaching us the process of building something physical. Yeah, I don't know that PCH has ever made jewelry before. So <laughs> this is probably taking them into a new area and, yeah. and having to force their uh, supply chains to think in a new way. Is that true? Yeah, well, it's interesting because Liam Casey's background is in fashion. So he's loved our company from the beginning and has been a big supporter. And he said, if you guys need a jewelry factory, we'll find you a jewelry factory. So that's yeah. been really nice to have that, those resources. And it, so, you know, you're going to take this prototype and keep making smaller you're a jewelry designer as well, so you have to think about fashion. I, yeah, so I, I'm not personally a jewelry designer, but okay. we have jewelry designers working for us to come up with our, our Ringly line. Okay. Yeah. And so and we do plan on doing partnerships. Again, us focusing on getting the tech as small as possible enables a lot of possibilities for the design of these things. We want the consumer to buy something because, you know, they want to wear it and it looks good to them and it matches their personal style which is interesting, you don't see a lot of that happening in wearables today. Yeah, that's a different skill than most Silicon Valley startup mm -hmm. tech people have, you know, which are trying to come up with a cool yeah. iPhone app or something like that. But it's interesting starting to blend the worlds and that's where I'm like really focused on. I mean, my background is in both art and human computer interaction. Yeah. So bridging technology and the arts together has always been something I've been interested in. And I think it's great, you know, the fashion people are embracing working with technologists and we're embracing working with them. So I think you're gonna see a lot more interesting collaborations in the future. Your company name is Ringly, which means you're probably gonna do a ring like, like you have on <laughs> yeah. your fit. Are you thinking of earrings or pendants or other kinds of wearable jewelry and wearable fashion? Yep, we're thinking about bracelets, rings, um, stuff for men, watch bands, or a piece that you can slip onto your watch. Um, but, you know, we have to solve problems. So, 
when I first came up with this idea, it was a little bit before all the risk stuff was out. And I just always saw it as a ring first. So we went with that. Um, but, you know, as long as we can solve problems, we can build anything. Yeah. Tell me about some of the tools that you use here mm -hmm. to design yeah. this software. Because you, you have we to come up with... We just saw us taking the, yeah. the 3D printed rings out of the acid bath over here. <laughs> but yeah, we use the 3D printers a lot. We use soldering irons. Of our, again, our stuff is really, really tiny, so we have to use microscopes in order to solder. Um, yeah, we've, we've done some you know, laser cutting, that kind of thing. Yeah. How, do, how have you been capitalized? So do venture capitalists get, get, get what yeah. you're trying to do? Well, it's interesting because I'm pitching a product for women to a bunch of guys, a bunch of VC guys, and all of them got it when their wife said, I want one of those. <laughs> they always went back and they came back the next day and they're like, my wife wants one. <laughs> yeah. You're in. Um, but yeah, we've been able to raise some money so far, Very which cool. has been great. You're going to announce, uh, what, what's your roadmap for 2014 look like? Because are you going to ship in 2014? We're, yeah, we're hoping to ship um, at the end of spring, early summer 2014, and be ready for next fashion, uh, fashion week in September. Are you um, uh, giving any idea of what the price of these things is going to be? Or? Yeah, we're trying to keep it to around 150 to $200. Okay. Yeah. And again, nice, nicer materials. It, it all depends on the type of materials. So type of stone, type of metal that we're using. It's, cool. it's all going to be a factor. It's going to be fun to watch you guys. It's going to be what, awesome, yeah. I, I'm I can't sure wait. I'm going to buy my wife one of them, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> she likes jewelry, and she's yeah. a geek. so you know. <laughs> That's a perfect combination. <laughs> she can be our early adopter. <laughs> exactly. Um, where do I uh, learn more about you guys? Where do I watch you? Yeah, or? so we're ring.ly online to so sign up for our website. Very cool. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Robert. Thanks.